Hey guys, welcome to episode three of the full project residential Revit electrical series that I've got going here on this channel. In this one, we're going to cover a little bit more of the view range changes we need to make for this project. And then we're going to finish laying out receptacles and HVAC equipment for this project to get it ready for circuiting in a future video. So stay tuned for more. Hey, and if you find this information useful, I'd love it if you hit that like button down below to help propagate it to others. And if you want to stick around for more electrical only Revit videos, please hit subscribe and even leave a comment if you like. So we left off episode two here in our first floor plan power. We got all of these receptacles installed. And the next thing we would like to do is work on the second floor power plan to get those receptacles installed as well. So double click that. And the first thing you will notice is that we have the devices from down below showing through on our second floor plan. This will happen once in a while on a project and you'll have to deal with what's called the view range. Now we looked at this earlier and set the view range up for a cut plane top and bottom. But that was for the first floor. If we review this, what we actually ended up with, we tried a few different things, is we ended up needing the bottom of our view range, if you recall the picture, down at the level below so that we could show that sunken living room. And that works fine for that view. But now that we show the level below on second floor, well, level below, if we look at our elevation, Level below, level two, is level one. So we see all of this space between level one and level two. So we need to fix that. There's a couple ways we can deal with this. And so this is good practice on dealing with the view range, which can be quite an issue on some projects. Okay, so back to the first floor. Because we have this sunken living room, we do need to see lower, at least in this area. We do not need to see lower in the entire view. View range affects the entire view. So we can set the view range up for just this normal level one view, and then we can apply a separate view range just to this sunken living room. So let me show you how to do that. Let us reset up our view range for this view template for just this first floor view. So go down to view range, edit this. Instead of level below, we're gonna set the bottom to this actual associated level at zero. And the view depth, we don't need to see below our first level in this case. Now, again, in some cases, on a first floor at least, you may want to see under the floor. You may want to see underfloor conduits coming in. That would tend to lead to a separate view template just for level one. In this case, we're not going to show that. So we're going to have level one and level two be the same. So we have associated level from the bottom and the view depth will also be, because view depth is how much below the bottom do we wanna see? We don't wanna see any of that. So we're gonna say it's also the associated level. So the bottom and the view depth are the at the associated level, which is level one in this case. So there. Now, as we predicted, we cannot see the receptacles in the sunken living room. Go up to view, and under plan views, you will see this thing near the bottom called plan region. I'll point to a video link up above for a whole video I did just on view range and plan region. But the short story here, plan region allows you to, to set up an area that you want to apply a different view range to. So this is perfect for this sunken living room. So we are in a sketch mode because you see the little check and the X marks here. And our plan region can be a rectangle. So we will use the rectangle tool and just select a portion of the project that is sunken lower. Now I'm going to call this, these are steps. The bottom step is where I'm starting. And I also want to include the walls in this. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to drag it. And I do want to include this porch area as well. So I'm going to be a little bit outside like that and say okay now i could have set up the view range there but let's go back and we can get to this it's a dash line over here you'll see it has its own view range edit that and this is where now we can set up just this plan region to have a different lower level 
So instead of saying just level below, we get absolute levels. We want to select level one living room as the bottom of our range and the view depth as well. And those are all no offset to those. Hit OK. And now our symbols show back up because this view range is set up differently. So that is a very common way to apply a different view range to different areas of your project. You may encounter a school, for example, that has a gymnasium that's very high compared to some classrooms next to it. You can use the plan region to increase the height of that view range to show your lights up at the top of the gym. So that's a very common technique, and it doesn't mess with our actual view template. Now we can see the second floor, which has that view template applied, is correctly showing nothing below. So we fixed those problems. Now we can get right into adding receptacles to this bedroom level. And we can move these room names around like that. So let us see. Like I mentioned before, we're going to do basic NEC code locations for receptacles, and we'll cover some of that. I talked about that in episode two a little more and gave you a link to a good resource on YouTube. So let us find our receptacles. We're down here, duplex receptacles, standard. And let's start showing these. Now, as we talked about, we need to be within six feet of the end of a wall. Well, that also includes... Any wall that is two feet or longer has to have a receptacle. And we can check dimensions of this guy with the dimension tool, or like we did before, we can go to annotate and draw some detail lines just to get an idea how long this is. That's two foot, just over two feet. And this is out here. This is one foot six. So we have three or four feet. It's not long enough to require two receptacles, but it indeed does require one. So put this at a reasonable location in the center of one of these walls, typically. Let's go here. Now along this wall, we have to start our six foot dimension from this edge of this doorway in what looks like a closet and start counting six foot maximum from here. So let's look here and we have roughly three feet and then we can go another three feet. So let's put one a little short of three feet Right click. First of all, let's make sure this is the right height. We're good. We're at level two and we're one foot six. Again, I'm showing these at commercial 18 inch height. You can put them down at 12 inches for a residence if you want. Great, similar. Get this guy right here. Get rid of our line. Now we have the rest of this wall. Let's see what dimension that is. We're beyond six feet. So we're in a position where this full wall is a little longer than 12 feet, so we need two receptacles. Now, I'll call your attention to this guy. This is a pocket door. And so that's a door, of course, that slides into the wall. It is not enough depth in here to actually recess a box for a receptacle. Choices are you could go a surface box or you could go with a floor receptacle. But in reality, since this is not more than six feet deep, we don't need to put one within this three foot door length. We can put it just near it. So we could put this guy right there. And then the other one, anywhere we can put, I'm going to put it on this wall as well. So we have a couple places to plug things in, in this little hallway, if you want to set a, a little table and a lamp right here, whatever you like to do. We do not require receptacles in the closet, although I will note that a lot of times, at least in apartments, you may get a some kind of a media cabinet in here that would need a receptacle, so keep that in mind. Let's continue on with this bedroom. We have a window, and this is where I use my section again, which I already have drawn. Let's use a section and see what we have upstairs for windows. Now we need to make sure that my section is looking far enough so if i click on that i can see that the dashed line of the depth of this section does not include this wall so i won't see that window so let's get this down a little further and again these sections are just for us during design i'm not dragging these sections onto a plan let's go back to that section that i already hit and let's see where we are it's good to have an idea 
let's pull this in a bit so we're only looking at our room. That helps us to narrow down our view. You can do it here, or you can actually do it in the section. You can get to this crop. If I click on the crop, you'll see a, a, a dot that I can drag around and narrow it down. I like to do it in the view so that I really know what I'm looking at. So back to the section. Second story. Let's get up to the second floor. Just to help us remember where we are. Okay. So that window comes clear down to the floor level. Good to know. So we cannot put a receptacle here unless we did something like a floor receptacle. We're going to try to avoid that. And actually, the window counts as part of the wall. So we start here, and we have to be within six feet. Looks to me like we're going to put one right here in this corner, either down here or on this wall. You can take your pick. And we run into what we did on episode two, where we found this grid line is trying to host our receptacle. Hover over the grid line, hit tab, because tab will drill down through all the stacked lines. And now we're hosting to our wall. There we go. And I will put this a little bit of ways. And if you have any trouble getting to here, you can sometimes just go down to another portion of the wall, put it there, and drag it over. I'm going to drag this near the window instead of around this corner. And then we can go up to 12 feet away with the next receptacle. So what do we have here? We have 10 feet and then another 2 feet. And I'm going to stay a little bit short of 2 feet just to be safe. I can put a receptacle around this corner. However, that's looking like window again to me. So let us get a section in there. I have one looking that way. I could take this and there's a little flippy left and right button that I can use. You can see that the head, the head of this turns around. I can do that. I can drag this over. Instead of creating a bunch of sections, I can do that. And I'm making sure I'm looking at this wall. Let's see this section. And get up to second floor. Try to isolate that so we can see it a little better. Okay. This is all glass. This is glazing. It comes clear down to level two. So this is this architect likes full height glass walls. Okay, so we're going to need floor receptacles in this case. I can avoid one in this area by keeping my receptacle down on this actual wall. So that's what I'm going to do. Create similar. I'm going to put it in a little bit in from that wall. Use my tab to get past the grid line. There he goes. It does mean I'm a little further to my next receptacle. So let's see what we have for distance here. We're only a foot away, and we can go up to 11 feet away with this. How far is the door? Okay, so we are going to have to put one here. So that's within 11 feet. I'm going to put one right here at this million. And instead of trying to find my floor receptacle, which is not that hard to do here, I can also just go to first floor. As long as I have second floor open, go to first floor. I can simply right click on this, create similar, and then pop over to my second floor and place that. So there's a number of ways you can get to these things. So there's that, and I'm within six feet of the end of this wall, which is which the door creates the end of the wall. So I'm good there. Now let's see the rest of this room starting at this wall here. I need to be within six feet. There's five, seven. Again, does this window hit the floor? I'm not even going to look. I just am sure it does. So we will put a receptacle. Instead of going floor, we're going to put one right here at the edge. And let's see, is there a grid line? There is. But it looks correct, so I'm going to place it there. We'll... What do I have for dimensions? We have 15, 16 feet to the end, so I will definitely need another receptacle here. Let us put one oh, in the midway. If you, as you're looking at this wall, it'd be kind of in the middle of the wall. And then this is, again, an outside porch, which is going to require receptacles. So let's get those out here. I'll put one here, and let's just say for convenience, we'll put another one down here. 
and tab to make sure that we are on the wall. So this room looks good to me. Let's look at the bathroom. Now we have a tub. For now, we're gonna say that it's just a regular tub that needs no power, but we do have a sink. So we need to get an above counter, a higher mounted receptacle. Back on first floor, let's find what we have. Over here in the bathroom, we had a counter height receptacle. And as a reminder, we are using as much as we can the out of the box Revit symbols and devices. So this was their symbol for counter mounted receptacle. As long as we indicate this symbol on a symbol list with our project, which we will do in future episodes, then we're golden. As long as your symbol list matches what you're doing on your plan, you're good to go. Unless you start getting into custom symbols, which I also show how to do. I'll point to one of the videos above that shows how to create some custom symbols and content for your models. But for now, we're going to use the out of the box and we're going to right click, create similar, pop back to second floor and put this on the right or left. I don't see a compelling reason for either one. Let's just put it right here. So that's really the only receptacle we need in this restroom. And again, we're going to rely on some written specifications or some notes elsewhere to remind the installer to make GFCI type receptacles where needed, tamper proof receptacles, arc fault breakers, all that kind of thing. We're going to handle with some general notes so that we don't have to try to indicate all of that in the plan. Okay, now this bedroom will be similar and I will start laying these out and then I'll have the video speed it up a little bit so you don't have to watch every little decision. But it's the same process, measurements, and placing of receptacles. So one, two, three, four, five. Bedrooms typically need four or five receptacles, you'll find. In the bath, we have an issue here with this sink. Let's right click, create similar. I like to put it on the side wall of the sink. And while I'm here, let's do the side wall of this sink. And this bedroom will not quite, it looks like a mirror, but it's not really because it has different walls. And so each bedroom has to be figured out individually. If you're really trying to min max this thing, you'll you'll stretch these as far as you can with 12 feet, but I don't think there's a problem having one extra receptacle in a bedroom. If you've ever been in a bedroom that doesn't have enough receptacles or in the right place, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that's roughly six feet. So yeah, we're gonna be further than six feet from this guy. So we're gonna need two receptacles on this wall. Let's get them something like this, try to make it usable. Now, what's our issue here? We have no grid line, and it's a little bit away from that wall. So something there. See, something's going on. Once we get up here, we have a little different graphic. So let's get to the point where the works on the wall, and then we can drag it down. So something like that. One, two, three, another five. And those these are good sized bedrooms. Okay, that's the bedrooms. Now let's look at the entry hall. Looking at codes, you find out that if, if a hallway itself is longer than 10 feet, it needs a receptacle. So we need at least one in here. I think for usability, it makes sense to put a couple. So I'm going to put one. I have a lot of sliding doors. I could put one at the end here. And then I think another one in this entry would be nice. Now, hallways aren't just for plugging in a vacuum cleaner, for example. Sometimes people will set little tables along the wall and put a lamp on it. So you need to think about that as well. If it's a wide enough hallway, that might happen. Now this hall here, definitely somebody could put something along this if they wanted to, but it's not required by code to have these. So again, make your judgment call on what you want where. 
This happens to be a walkway over to the driveway. So we don't require one out there. And you don't require any in a stairway. This is an outside terrace type patio. Now this could be considered, you know, a balcony or patio. So I would get a receptacle out here for that reason. So let's put one right here on the wall. Now, another thing we want to look at up here is some equipment needs, HVAC, HVAC needs. Now, again, we don't have a mechanical or HVAC design done for this project, but on most projects, you will have that and you'll refer to that. You can either link the model in if you have that or refer to the PDF documents that they have and cut sheets. So we're going to say we have all that information behind the scenes. And what we found out is there's going to be an exhaust fan in each bathroom. So let's go back to our fan. We have standard. Now this fan from Revit is hosted. It, it wants to host to a wall, which is, I would say, unusual for a piece of equipment. Usually they're floating. We can put them anywhere we want. But in this case, we're using their built-in. So we're going to put it right here. And because sometimes the, the fan will be near the shower, near the toilet. So we'll get this guy right here, at least for now. We can move the room tag around and we will call this. We're going to duplicate this so that we have separate type parameters like load and load classifications that we can apply to it. So we want it to be its own type and we'll just call this bath fan. Something like that. 120 volt single phase. Load classification, now I like to classify these things something like HVAC, say okay. And then the apparent load, you know, these things are typically small. We'll stay with 100 VA for now, say okay. And we've determined from previous episode that we do not have a built-in tag to tag this piece of equipment with its name. So we have to use dumb text. Again, another reason why we create custom families. So we have more variety. But for here, we're going to do this. This is uh, an out of the box project. So we will say bath fan, get that in here and point to this with a leader. I had a leader and we can adjust the shoulder of it. Something like that. We will need to do the same thing down below, create similar. Let's get that fan right here. We can also use copy here, or we can control C and control V, copy paste, move it around. You can drag the leader over to the other side, or you can also use the controls up top and remove the last leader and then add a leader to the left. So that's sometimes a shortcut. You can move this around with a little move symbol. So a lot of variety of what you can do with the text. Bath fan there. And we need another one in the master bath. Right click, create similar. And we're going to say that this bathroom ends up having two fans in it. So we'll get that. Copy this from here to here. Swap it over. And sometimes you need to move this to a different room. Whatever works drafting wise for you. And we're going to have another bath fan. Let's say it's out here near the shower. Great, similar. You can retype it yourself. You can copy it. Lots of options. Get this master bath out of the way. And like so. Now the controls for these fans, many times you'll just have a switch on the wall and we can do that. Or it may be switched with the lights. So we will deal with the controls for these fans when we get to the lighting plans. And just know that we are only showing device layouts right now. This is kind of a preliminary layout you might call it a schematic design, design development. Those are the fancy terms for this. But 
a lot of time architects may only show this much. They may just show a layout and not go further. We are going to go further as the electrical designers. We are actually going to circuit these things up to a panel similar to a commercial project and assign loads that way. We will also do a load summary in the residential way so you can see how those contrast with each other. One other thing I just realized we haven't addressed is on the first floor, we also have a bathroom and we need to get a bath fan there. So let's right click, create similar, back to the first floor, and let's get that bath fan. And let's get that labeled. Let's say our HVAC design put a fan in here. And let's say that this one is a different wattage fan, a different kind of fan. So let us create yet another type because we want to change some of the type parameters. So we need a different type. Let's go laundry fan. And let's say it's a little bigger. It's 200 VA. So we've created a separate type for that. And we will label this guy. Click this, hold out. Seeing this section line reminds me that when you print this to a PDF or to paper, you have the option to not show these section indicators if they are not actually dragged onto a sheet. There's no need for this to print with an empty sheet and detail number. So that will not actually show up in our final print. So don't get concerned that this line cuts right through our words and such. It's not going to show up. Like I say, unless we turn it into an actual section or elevation that we want to show up. One more piece of mechanical equipment that we need to show is the cooling unit that goes with the furnace. I also noticed we did not label this furnace, so we need to label that. Again, in custom symbols, we would have a tag that does that for us. And I'll point to a video up above that shows how we can create custom tags and make them show the parameters that we want. So we're going to say the mechanical unit is located outside. And let's say that they just put it out here. So we will show, create similar, get that on the wall. I think this is a foundation and the actual wall is here. So we will do that. Edit this. Again, it needs different type parameters. It's a different piece of equipment. We will duplicate this and call this Nancy unit. And you would look at a cut sheet for the unit you're dealing with. And it's two poles. Revit considers 240 a two-phase connection. Even though it's line to line, and sometimes we call that a single phase, it's really phase to phase. So there's two phases involved. Revit deals with it as a two phase connection. It's HVAC, and then we're going to say this is, oh, it's like 3,000 watts. Apply that. And we will call this Nansen Unit. Like that. Okay, guys, I would say that we have our receptacle layout done for both floors. So next time we will jump into laying out our lighting. Before we circuit anything, I want to get all this laid out. So we'll see you next time in the next episode. Thanks for watching.